women are women and trans women are trans women. Like, so I, you don't think that trans women are women? No. Well, I think that we're trans women. <laughs> I went from point A to point B. Like, it's not that hard to understand, you know? I lost all this depth and I was just like, okay, I'm not dilating. I'm not doing this. Shit. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm going to be a human Barbie with fucking non working vagina. So you were saying that in the last week you've been debating whether or not you want to get back into sex work. Yes. But I understand there's those people that they don't, like, even just me going from point A to point B, living my life as a trans woman. Like, I had this this guy the other day, um, he wrote underneath, like, one of my YouTube videos. And was like, oh, it doesn't matter how you, pretty you look or how how female, like, you you look, that you're still male. It's, it's still a gay act to, uh, for a guy to intimately basically be with you. Like, were you, were you fucking mad? No. Right. Thank you. That That's all. I'm like starstruck now that like I'm you're back on my channel. I'm so happy. Oh, you're so sweet. Stop it. Oh my gosh, everyone has been loving you. I can't wait to you know get back into it with you. Oh, uh, so you I feel like you look taller. I think it's the boots. This this crazy. Because, I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah. Oh my you, gosh. You nice to see, nice to see you. you too. Oh my gosh. Make yourself comfortable. Okay, thank you. Okay. I love the hair thank you're giving. You, you like? Yes. I love it. It's straight, but like the same vibe. Thank you. Yeah, I try to keep it, you know, um, even when I'm playing with like extensions or like wigs and things like that, I try to keep it. Because it's a wig, right? Uh, oh, no. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, sorry, no sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm playing. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it is a wig. No, but it looks you, good. But you know, I got to match my sideburn, you know, my real hair, so that when it blows in the wind, it looks like my hair. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back and talking with you. <laughs> Although it doesn't feel like it's been that much time. Well, I feel like it has been, you know? I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little, a little tad bit, just a little, sh not ashamed, but like, you know, I was hoping to, I guess, have better news, you know, for you coming back. Well, you know, I was first gonna start because uh, to say thank you for being so open and vulnerable with your story on my channel, it reached a lot of people, more people than I thought it would. It is such a sensitive story for you, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts about it getting so many views and what that's been like. Well, um, you know, in the beginning, I mean, it was it was a little overwhelming, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Cause I, I guess I'm just not used to all of that attention, but, you know, I'm not talking to my mom anymore. Because of the episode? Because of the episode, yeah. And, and keep in mind that, like, me and her relationship was already, like, you know, it's not like if we had like the strong, wonderful relationship. Like I see my grandmother more like my mom because she was the person who was predominantly in my life. Um, my mom was in my life, but the memories that I have of my mom aren't like the most pleasant. But she has sent me a text message saying that she saw the video. Like, she got offended because I said that, you know, we all have different fathers. Like she thought that I was trying to call her a slut. And I was just like, no, I was just trying to give the bigger picture. She basically was telling me that I went on your channel and I was lying about being molested about you know her and her parenting skills for for clout and for fame she has sent me this whole thing and i like i, I kind of went back off on her because she was saying you know stuff like um like oh okay when it comes to my religion i was about my brother he was four years older than me so technically when it all happened when it started out i was like five six years old he was a kid technically in her eyes she feels like you know, oh, that doesn't count. He was just a kid, blah, blah, blah. He did it until I was like 12 years old to going to 13. I was terrified of my brother. My brother has bipolar. As I got older, my brother kept on, you know, I, I, in the beginning, I liked it. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was a kid and I felt a feeling. I was just like, what is this? I liked it, but then eventually um, I didn't like it. And It's just so hurtful that like my my mother could say sit here and say that like I'm not and my brother also did a video too. He went on, he he did a YouTube video 
making excuses for his behavior. I've forgiven him for what has happened because I understand he was a child. I understand that he, he was a you know what I mean, in, in some sort of facet. I don't know what it was or who it was because he lies a lot, but I have forgiven him. You know, I've forgiven all parties. I've forgiven my mom. So at the end of the day, I don't know what it's like to be a mother at the age she had all of us. She had all of us very young, but I can't sit in a room or be around somebody who thinks that way of me, that I would go on camera and say lies you know, I want I want to be known for my fucking art and my music. Like you know, what I mean, like this is this is shit that I feel like can help other people. But this is not like what I want to be known for. I don't want to be known for like my problems. I don't want to be known for. But you know, I, I do it because I feel I, I, I'm called to do it. You know, I feel like there are not a lot of people that have the balls. <laughs> no pun intended. I don't really got them anymore. But <laughs> but you know, like to actually be so honest and so transparent. But like for you to say that like I'm lying you know for attention and it's just hurtful do you regret being open about your mom and everything for the episode i don't have any regrets about it i feel like if anything it just kind of like opened up my eyes like as to like what she truly was feeling all along if she came to you and wholeheartedly apologized where how would you feel i would accept the apology i mean like and i would appreciate that i mean that'll be that'll be great I hope that happens. Yes, yeah, come over here, kneel down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give it to me. Just a little, you know. I love the smell too, it's like woodsy. Yeah, for sure. No, that, I love it too. It's calming. I feel like, you know, I, I mean, I believe that it can, you know, um, not necessarily clear negative energy, but keep the good. It's a grounding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh. See, I got, my, I got my incense, I got my sage, and so yeah, these are things that just kind of make me feel centered yeah it makes me feel centered it makes me feel calm <laughs> yes okay good, yeah. okay, good. it okay. makes me feel you know yep. like feminine yes. <laughs> like just in my divine feminine energy you know i love it so but but i i also just love I like my place to smell good i like you know because it has like aromatherapy there's times where I like I feel like like I wonder if it's if it's gonna be worth it. Like in terms of like music and stuff like that, like you gotta pay these producers, you gotta pay these people to to get the job done. And you know, I've also come across you know like people who were respectful of me. I actually met the one well, didn't meet this guy. We were talking online. You know, he was basically telling me that he wanted to introduce me to some people at Atlantic Records, and because I didn't want to f him, it's like where's the contract? Where's the contract? Show me some real sh then you know, okay, then I might give it up. But like, you just talking, you just talking all this shit. And then I guess he saw our video and he was just like, oh, please, bitch, you're a project, bitch. Like, you're this, you're that, you're not gonna be nothing. And uh, I'm just, a, I'm just a, 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 a it. I'm just a it, you know, that's never gonna go nowhere. Well, then that's a blessing that he saw it because yeah, now true. you saw who he was and for you don't sure. wanna work with that. Yeah, for sure. But you know, little things like that will make you feel like, damn, like, do I, am I really cut for this, like, industry? Like, you know, because I know there are a lot of people that are up human beings in, in in the industry and i don't know i'm just a hermit i'm just a i'm just i'm just a hermit i'm a bit introverted i have a verse um that i wrote about that i used to be an extrovert but now i'm introverted i used to wear my heart but now it's inverted and now i find my peace only when i'm deserted i used to know it all but i guess i'm still learning so f closure i'm older don't cry on my shoulder i'll burn you i'm solar i'll switch a bipolar i'm conscious i'm sober go low i'll go lower i'm small right now but truth is i'm a grower you know i love it but th that's how, that's how i feel sometimes you know you're so good at writing thank you thank you <laughs> i think <laughs> i mean it and i think that you like i was telling off camera but like you are just such an artist in all aspects like you just see it it's not just songwriting it's everything like i feel like your art knows no bounds there's no like limits to your creativity so if you just keep pursuing and allow creative avenues to happen who knows if it ends up being songwriting who knows if it ends up being rapping who knows if it ends up being yeah. whatever but like your your journey is art honestly Thank you, I appreciate that. Like, that makes you feel good. I actually have, listen, it's nothing crazy. You don't have to open it. Oh my God, I, really? It, you, don't, you don't have to open it in front of the camera, but it's just a little gift. I will open it in front of the camera. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> so sweet. Really, it's really nothing. I wish I could have, you know, gotten something more. No. But it's just, it's just a little, just a thought. Oh my gosh, you're little, so cute. Let me open it. Just a little appreciation. Thank you. Situation. Oh, I love you so much. I love you too, honey. And that's just a little, little. <gasps> oh my gosh! <gasps> so 
I says an M love from Love it. Evan Morgan too. Right? No, but yeah, just a little, you know, something. Oh, should we put it on me? Let me take my jacket off. Yeah, yeah. I literally love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's so sweet of you. It glistens, honey. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. You're bringing it. Yes. Okay. Y'all like them, y'all? They're new. Are they new? But these are new. Yeah, these are new with titties. They look great. Thank you. So. They're insurance titties. I always get so like hesitant to ask you about this, the surgeries of it all, but I feel like I have to ask you now because like of the last episode, people, yeah. uh, just updates. You know no, what I mean? Sure. No, no, yeah. Um, actually, I I do want to mention something. You know, I I saw a comment on about like how like you know there's people like with breast cancer or something like that, like you know, or people dying and like they can't pay for their shit, but they could pay for us. I agree. I think that it's it, it is an unfortunate situation that there are people that you know have heart problems or or you know people who just have a hard time getting insurance to cover things that are could be life sh like you know life saving i think so too i mean i think one of the biggest faults in our system right now is the healthcare system and the fact that the rich can see any specialist they want about anything they need yeah. and they can get the answers to any medical questions they have and the people that are less fortunate can't even see a doctor if they're or paying hundreds of thousand dollars because they have cancer that was something that they didn't even that's just like it seems so messed up you know yeah. but i don't think that that has anything to do with you and you getting your surgery covered because I think that's fair too, you know? No, for sure. Like, I, I think it's it's fair, but I can see how people can look at it as an injustice or as a, like a, you know, like, I could, I could see that. Is there any update with like every, the surgery and, you know, the usability of everything? Um, So she's still closed for shop. It just sucks, which is why I talk about it because I just feel like, you know, it's not necessarily to try to deter you know, uh, you know, another trans girl from getting it done. You do what you want with your body. I'm pro-choice. And I also know, I'm aware that I got my surgery done in 2014. So it's a different time. Maybe things have, have evolved and changed. But I just also want to put my story out there because it's, it's a real one and it, it can happen to anybody. Do you have any planned surgeries coming up that would help it be? No, no I got, I'm, I'm on a, on a seven year waiting list for a consultation. How do you even know? what your life is going to be like in seven years to plan a set date to have an appointment. What happened was that I had a consultation and like I wrote it wrong on my calendar and it was like the next day I called to like confirm, oh, like I'm, it's today, right? Whatever. And they were like, no, it was yesterday and I, I missed it. So since I missed it, then... You can manage to meet? Oh no! She be shut. Oh, oh, she hood. I told you she hood. Oh, I love how she does that. That's so funny. It's cute, right? Honey, baby. I think I saw a video from you yeah. saying that you were gonna stop using the word yeah. sis. Well, you know, I, I feel like that's fair, just because I mean, women are women and trans women are trans women. Like, so I, you don't think that trans women are women? No. Well, I think that we're trans women. <laughs> I went from point A to point B. Like, it's not that hard to understand, you know. But I understand there's those people that they don't like even just. Me going from point A to point B, living my life as a trans woman. Like I had this uh, this guy the other day. Um, he wrote underneath like one of my YouTube videos, and was like, "Oh, it doesn't matter how you, pretty you look or how how female like you you look that you're still male. It's it's still a gay act to uh, for a guy to intimately basically be with you. Like, were you were you fucking mad? No. Right. Thank you. That that's all. It's not that hard to understand. It's like like. I understand that I was born male. I, I completely understand that. But I have transitioned and physically have, you know, changed in a way that I appeal to a straight a straight man because I look like a woman. Oh, to know? me, you are a woman. Like, in my in my mind, like, I would never even think of saying anything but she heard you. Like, to me, you are a woman. People are just always going to have an opinion. But, you know, I, I do understand that, you know, I'm not female. I wasn't born female. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. At a point, I was trying to like adhere to this cis heteronormative standard. I still try my dearest and my hardest, and I have gender dysphoria, so that's just what it is. But I understand like the difference. Our physical appearance matters. Like it's it's how we the first thing you see is a person how they look. I have seen that you've been getting in some in some touchy territory with your TikToks, oh, for sure. being open about your feelings yeah. towards this. And I, it's like it's like I I don't have a disdain or hate for non-binary people. Like I, if anything, I feel like trans people technically we are non-binary because we're not women. 
but we technically like you know we have shifted from like we're not really male either we kind of like fall in between you know there's no freedom in in being non-binary if you're going to be so hurt by somebody misgendering you because you don't look or present you got to understand that you know it's just psychology is human nature to like you know if i see a person who appears to be a woman but they identify as he or feel like they're a man how the fuck am i supposed to know that and like the way that people react it just makes us it makes trans people look crazy because they're hashtagging us. They're saying it's trans. People outside of the LGBT community, they, uh, you know, when they see these kind of people identified as trans, especially if it's these are videos that are going viral, getting a lot of views, like going to the women's bathroom and they don't care if somebody's gonna say, nobody's gonna take them out. And like just crazy shit that's like, why do we need to do all of that? But do you think that that, and this is just plain devil's advocate to you, but do you think that that is one or two stories compared to the hundreds of stories of people that maybe aren't passing, but that feel trans and are walking to the one's bathroom and feels affirming to them? What are we focusing on? Like, I know that those those stories are the ones that bring clicks on TikTok, which is sad that those, you know, that those right. specific stories of the people that are going in there when they shouldn't be. But then you think about like the hundreds of people that maybe aren't posting on TikTok that maybe aren't passing yet because they haven't gotten their surgeries yet, but feel inside their heart that they're trans and they're walking into the woman's bathroom. That affirmation only kind of way of things and, and, and the for the sake of inclusivity and being inclusive of everybody is can also become harmful because you do, we can't negate, we can't deny that there are people, men, not women, not trans women. It doesn't matter. I, I'm not a person who's fixated on a person whether they pass or not. But the effort you have to see, you know, if a person's like really trying to, you know, okay. and like what does that look like? People will say, what does that look like? What, what, like you know, like what? Where, where, where are women clothes? Where are male clothes? And that's just, it's like a deeper hole to dig, deeper hole, you know. But we have to focus on the now. There are people that you know, like a man who would just put a wig on, just to harass a woman and go and and you know the woman's bathroom unfortunately people are the type of people to you know make assumptions you know that we all are that are predatory and it's because people are just always like oh you know we don't have to investigate anybody we don't have to ask questions we don't have to if they say they are this then that that's what you are so i guess for you it's not about passing it's about effort and respect yeah listen i'm like i've always been like i've met trans women who aren't passing, who exude feminine energy, who exude womanly energy, more wo woman than I've ever experienced. I, I wouldn't disrespect the person who who's putting the effort in. I understand that not everybody's genetically blessed. Um, not everybody has the genes, or not everybody has the financial means for surgeries um, or coverage, insurance, and things like that. Like, I understand that. And not, not, not everybody wants to get, I guess, surgeries. That's valid, too. But... I don't feel like you're trans. You're not trans. I don't feel like you're trans if you if if you don't have gender dysphoria, like if you don't like have that like as the foundation of 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 it all. Then you're just playing dress up, or or you're just calling yourself a label, and it just feels more like a trend, more like a fad. When we decided you wanted to do an update episode, I hopped on the phone with you, and yes. you were mentioning that you felt like a little insecure about the fact that you don't feel like your life has changed that much since we last spoke, which is about a year ago. Well, I mean. In between that time, like, you know, I, I did, I was working, whatever. And then obviously, like, you coming back when I'm not necessarily working a day job. And um, in my the situation I, I'm in, like, it's a little, not that, you know, you my dad, I need to be a proud dad or something. But, like, you know, it's still, you know, it doesn't feel good to, you know, like, you know, the update is, like, oh, she's sucking dick. She's, you know, like, the, the thing is, you know, like, I'm a survivor. I am proud of you. I hope you know that. And I'm not expecting to come back in a year and you be Cardi B or whatever, you know, like you you getting through your days with a smile on your face and figuring it out. And that is what I'm proud of. Thank you. And no, I appreciate that. Um... What I love most about you is that you have a drive, that you have a passion, that you want more from your life that you don't let you, you don't let your doubts linger and shadow your light or stop you from creating those that that is what makes me so proud of you thank you um i, I try my best but it just is draining when like money is always the issue you know it could be depressing because i feel like i'm just like writing for myself and i am yeah, technically writing for myself but like you know i just feel like 
Is it a pipe dream? But you're not writing for yourself because you're writing to prepare yourself for when the moment happens. Like you have to remind yourself that every time you write, you get better. Every time you create art, you get better. And and then the moment will strike and you'll have all of this material and you have grown so much as an artist that you'll be ready for when the moment strikes. I'm trying to find like my happy place and sometimes I feel like it could be just like hard, um, you know, when like the finances aren't aligned what I'm doing to sustain a financial income at this moment, you know, would be considered degrading to some. Like, I don't know why it's so strange. Like nowadays, like ever since I've been doing this work, I've been getting all these guys who want to date me, want to talk to me, want to like pursue something with me or who are interested in me. And I just like, I'm like. But are they clients that want that from you? Some, but like, first of all, I don't want a, a man who, who goes on those fucking ad sites, you know, as my boyfriend, you know, so I can imagine a guy wouldn't want to be with somebody like me who was doing that for work. It's funny that you mentioned that though because there was this one guy who I saw recently. Oh my God, he was gorgeous. Um, he was a finance guy in finance, really good looking guy. And he came here and he took me down. He, yes. He, he, no, he, like in a good way? I mean, he, he fucked the shit. Like he, <laughs> I mean like he, 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 he the, and um, he he almost made me want to iron his clothes. Mm. He almost made me want to cook him a meal. Afterwards, like you know, I don't know. I felt after we were done, like it's like I was attracted to him, and like I could tell he was attracted to me. He he had written me after he left. He was like, "Wow, like that was amazing. I hope you enjoy that too." Whatever. I was just like, "Yeah, whatever." Um, I was like, "Although, I, like, I wish I met you in another kind of circumstance." And then he was like, "You know, I same same." He was like, "But you know, would you be interested in like?" You know, getting a drink and like, you know, we could take out to eat, we could hang out. But part of me was thinking like, oh, he probably just wants a freebie. He just wants to like, he's like, okay, like we we did what we did and whatever. Like I'm I'm hot, you know what I mean? You cute. Like, yeah, I could take her out for a drink, get her drunk and I don't have to pay. Let's say that he's genuine and you do go out for a drink with him. But I wouldn't because I, I feel shameful. Like I feel shame. I wouldn't fault him for judging me or anybody, or any other man judging me for what I do. Um. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, and, I, and I hear where you're coming from because you're not happy with what you're doing, but you shouldn't judge yourself for having to make money and finding a way to do it. It doesn't mean that you should stay in sex work. I honestly think that sex work doesn't seem like a good fit for you. It seems like I'm very mentally tolling on you, but at the same time, you should never judge yourself for that because you have to make ends meet. It, it doesn't mean that you don't want more from your life and it doesn't mean that this is something you're proud of, but it doesn't mean that you should be ashamed or judge yourself for it. I f this is how I see. I'm like, you know, there's people out here who are getting f for free, you know, by men that don't really care about them. Men, you know, like men don't want to really court me. Like there's no guy who really wants to like love me and care about me as a person. So, you know, like it's something that I crave. It's something that like I would want like in my life for some time but i don't i don't feel like i'm eligible for that um you are though why do you think that because i feel like you know like men don't like i'm not like i feel like men don't see me that way they they still see me like you know i'm just like a fantasy i'm this trans i'm just like a, you know a trans person um and like you know i can't have children mm -hmm. and like I love love, like, you know, I like, I want to be loved. You, you deserve to be loved. Like, I just feel like I don't, like, I, I never really, like, I never really had, like, a man love me. And when I get a little bit of affection, when I get a little bit of, of something from somebody, like, even with that date, that guy, like, I feel like when he left, I started just crying started crying because i'm like damn like that feels that feels so good i feel like this line of work is it's, it's it could be i mean i don't want to say great for every you know people or anybody because i feel like it can be taxing for anybody and everybody but there are just certain girls i feel like that are like i don't know just are able to just do it and kind of just see it as work and separate the emotional from the you know and but I don't know, I just feel like it kind of f***s my mental a little bit. It's physically taxing, it's emotionally, energetically taxing. Hearing you talk about it right now and seeing your eyes, like it feels heavy for you and it feels like something that's not agreeing with your, with your body. It sucks, but like, 
I'm not gonna lie, it's fast money. It just feels like they're like killing your soul. Like it just feels like it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel for me. But I'm also a good actor. When I'm in my mode, I'm you know, I'm just I'm focused and I'm just like I become, you know, an actress and I just do what I have to do. Okay. I'm out of here. Thank you. All right. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. It's so good to spend more time with you. Same, same. I feel so connected to you. Truly. Yes. You need you need to come to New York more. I know. Hey. So much love for you. Oh, I love you too. Always thinking about you and just sending you all my positive energy. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yeah. Come come back to New York soon, okay? Okay, I will. Okay. All right, darling. Okay. Have a good rest of the day. Make your money. Okay, I will. Okay, I'll be thinking of you. All right, darling. Okay, bye.